Hello everyone and welcome to Keeg's Late Night. Now this is a segment that I am making up right now and it's going to be talking about random topics and tonight's topic is why I love pies. Probably not the kind of pies that you're thinking about. They're raspberry pies. Well, maybe still not the pies you're thinking about. These are small computers that are fairly cheap. And it actually all started when I started making YouTube videos and I was running out of space on my hard drive with these YouTube videos just taking up a lot of space being videos and I wanted to get them off, but I didn't want to just delete them because you know, you, you never know when you might need them. So that's when I thought, what if I make a NAS, a network attached storage device with a whole bunch of storage that I can just throw things on whenever I want. You might say, Keegs, why don't you just buy an external hard drive? That'd be so easy. Or why don't you just buy a NAS? To which I would say, yes, let's buy an external hard drive. I agree. But I want to figure out how to make it as complicated in my life as possible. And no better way to do that than to get yourself a Raspberry Pi. Now, I was in Micro Center the other day and they had a Pi 400, which is basically just a Raspberry Pi all combined into one solid form uh, keyboard. Here, let me show you. So here we are under my desk. Here's my desk, see? And then we have right here is my Raspberry Pi. Now there's my external hard drive and that's, uh, that's my UPS. And then there's a hole for all my cables. Don't talk about my cable management. All right, so I didn't really want the Pi 400 because it's a headless OS that I put on there, which basically just means it's a background device and I'm never gonna put a display in it. I'm just gonna SSH from my actual desktop. But nonetheless, that's all they had. And in this chip market, I'll take what I can get. So I'm pretty new to the Pi scene and really to Linux as well. So I did a bunch of tutorials and just kind of figured out what I wanted, what would be the best to implement this. And I settled on Open Media Vault, which is open source, of course. And I went to the GitHub page and just installed it. It was actually pretty easy. And once I installed it, then I was able to navigate to the web page. Funny story here, when I originally plugged in my Pi, I spent probably about 10 minutes looking at my router settings, trying to figure out what the IP of the Pi was. And then I realized that, um, yeah, that, that switch right there, I, I hadn't plugged in the ethernet on that side. It was plugged in on the Raspberry Pi side, but not on the other side. And that's a, that's a vital component to getting internet. So anyway, then I plugged in my external hard drive and then navigated to Open Media Vault, mounted the drive right on there, and then did a little configuring for NFS and FTP, which is just the uh, Windows and Apple, Mac, whatever, um, different formats. Then navigate to your control panel, add a network attached storage, and boom, there it is. And with that, now I have a centralized storage system where I can save from anywhere in the house to that specific folder. And anybody in the house can take out of that folder. As you can see here, my wife has already gotten some use out of it. Maybe one day I'll try a RAID system on it, but for now it was working perfectly. I was happy. And then a couple weeks passed and I thought, what else can I do with this Raspberry Pi? And that's when someone told me about Pi Hole, which as they described is an ad blocker on steroids. So I had to try it out. So first thing I did was went to Pi Hole and then I SSH'd into my Pi, took that command that Pi Hole's website had, typed it in there, boom, it installed, everything worked perfectly. And now you just have to go to the web-based app to kind of configure it. So I typed in the IP address and oh wait this is open media vault what the heck oh I guess I can't have two IPs for one piece of hardware this is gonna take some troubleshooting all right after troubleshooting a bit then I found this YouTube video that I'm gonna link below because it was actually really helpful for me and what it is is using open media vault you can install a plugin which is docker and that creates a container. 
And if you don't know what that is, then it's basically like a virtual machine. It's not a virtual machine, I know. But in this sense, it acts as one as I can set a different IP to that machine within a machine. So that way I can have two IPs and go to two different websites to access both the things that I need to. This video was great, super helpful. The only part that I really struggled with in this tutorial was finding my subnet. And what I ended up doing is found my gateway and then made a educated guess as to what my subnet was. And it worked, so good. And then I went to the web address and was able to customize everything. It worked perfectly. So I went to my router settings, set my primary DNS to ping that little pie down there. And now everything on my network is blocking ads. I don't have to install it on every single device individually and devices that you can't install ad blocker on like TVs even block stuff, which is amazing. These two projects have shown me just how awesome these little Raspberry Pis are. They are so powerful and fun and I definitely see myself getting more and using them more in the future. But I would like to know, do you have a Raspberry Pi? And if you do, what are some of your favorite projects that you've done on it? I'm really interested to hear what other people have come up with. But for now, this is Keeg's Late Night Talk signing off. Have a great evening.